So for the last two weeks, we've been talking about sharing our gifts, sharing our gifts or our talents. We were all encouraged to discover our gifts, develop our gifts, and do our gifts for God. If you miss those sermons, you can find them on centerpointnwa.com. You can also go to our YouTube channel, which is at centerpointnwa. I encourage you to listen to those or watch those to get caught up. But if you have enjoyed the past few weeks, I've got really good news for you. It's about to get better. You see, we're getting ready to move from the infinite to the finite. We're getting ready to move from the unlimited to the limited. Allow me to illustrate this with a story if I can. Raise your hand if you're the person at your house that changes the air filters. Yeah. Boy, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? At our house, the air filter is behind an upright piano. So changing the air filters involves moving a piano and then changing the filter, and then, you know, sweeping and vacuuming behind it, cleaning everything up before pushing the piano back. And on top of that piano sits pictures and candles and a lamp and a Scentsy warmer pot. You guys know what a Scentsy is, right? Basically, somebody took a jar and put a light bulb in it, and then charge $50 for it. You put a piece of wax on top and it melts it kind of like a candle. Well, last weekend I was changing our filter because my thermostat reminded me it was time to do so. I was changing the filter and, and I went to cleaning up behind the piano and can anybody guess what happened? The broom caught the cord of the Scentsy and next thing you know, it was lying on the floor in 20 or 30 pieces. I broke it. Would you believe that that scentsy didn't belong to me? I mean, I like good smells, but uh, that happened to be Christina's. And as she always is, Christina was loving and gracious with me. But I could tell that she was pretty fired up about the whole situation and it probably didn't help that just moments before I broke it she said do you want me to unplug that and move it and I said no it's fine well it wasn't fine and I broke it and she wasn't very happy with me and I could tell that she wasn't so I was like babe look it's not a big deal I said was that Cincy in any way sentimental to you? Like, did you get that from, from somebody who's no longer with us? Or, and she said, no, but I liked it. And I said, it's fine. We'll go get a new one today. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Now, I want to pause that story for just a minute. And I want to tell you that our gifts from God are not limited. Our gifts from God are are not finite, they're infinite. We can use them over and over and over again and they never run out. Just like a sensi, there's a virtually unlimited supply. If you have the gift of teaching, it's not like you have a punch card and it has 10 lessons on it. And every time you teach a lesson, they punch that card. And whenever you teach the 10th time, you lose that gift. It's over. The next time you get up and try to teach, you're done. That's not how our gifts work. You can teach 10 lessons or 100 or 1,000, and you never lose that gift. In fact, if anything, your gifts should grow as you use them, right? You should get better at teaching. If you have the gift of prophecy, you should get better at being able to communicate God's word. If you have the gift of hospitality, you should get better at being hospitable. Our gifts are always available, just like a sensi, or so I thought. You see, Courtney explained to me when I was telling Christina that it wasn't a big deal, she explained to me that her mom really liked that sensi. 
that she thought it was pretty and that sometimes Christina would sit in our living room with her coffee and when life seemed to be overwhelming her, she would look at that little brown jar and it would bring her joy. So running to Walmart and picking up another one just wasn't going to work. It had to be a pretty one. Well, how many people know that what one person thinks is pretty, another does not? So I didn't know what to do, and then it hit me. I said, I know what I'll do. It's easy enough. I'll just order the same exact one. So I went to the trash can. I pulled out the bottom of the broken jar that had the label on it. I read it, and I went to the Internet, and I searched DSW. Dash F A R F D S W dash Farf. And guess what it pulled up? Farfall, brown butterfly, full size warmer. It was right there on the Cincy website. Everything was great. It was right under a heading that said discontinued 2012. You have got to be kidding me. All of a sudden, the thing that I thought was limitless became limited. Does anyone know the main difference between things that are limitless and things that are limited? Price. Oh, yeah. You will be glad to know that I found the last Farfall Brown Butterfly full-size warmer on the planet. I found it on eBay, and it currently sits on our piano. But it cost me a whole lot more than I expected to pay when I told Christina, hey, it's no big deal. We'll just replace it today. Well, today we're not talking about sharing Scentsy warmers. But in a sense, we're talking about the same type of thing because where we were talking about sharing our gifts, which are not limited. Today we're going to pivot to talking about things that aren't limitless, things that are finite, things that are limited. Today we're going to talk about something that if you choose to share it, it's going to cost you. Because you only have so much. And to be honest, what you have already isn't enough. If I were to ask you today what the one thing is that you don't have enough of, what would be your answer? Go ahead, shout it out. All right. Just like most groups of people, the main answers are two things, money and time. Today we're going to talk about sharing our time. Time is something that many of us wish we had more of. I can't tell you how many times I have heard the statement, well, there's just not enough hours in the day. I just wish I had more time. No, you don't, because you'd fill it up too. This is something Christina gets on to me about all the time. She says, you have to fill every minute, don't you? You guys know that I'm helping Hunter and Justin coach a peewee football team. It's taking quite a bit of my evenings and some of my weekends. Well, this weekend we had a bye. We didn't have a game. So you know what I decided to do? Go watch the team we're playing next week. Scout them for a fourth grade football game. Christina said, what is wrong with you? Nobody has enough time. It's with that thought in mind that I want us to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Hopefully you're already there. We're going to start reading in verse number 14, where it says, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his own ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. 
After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Verse 22, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Verse 26, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I've not sown and gather where I've not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus tells this story in a series of stories when he's teaching. If I were to ask you what this story is about in one word, what word would you use? I think many people would say money. Some people would probably say time because you know what I'm preaching about this morning. Some people would say talents. If any of those are your answers, you're right. And you're also wrong. See, this story is about stewardship. Stewardship, according to Google, is the job of supervising or taking care of something, such as an organization or property. This story is one that, in my Bible above the story, it's called the parable of talents. That's what we usually refer to it as. If you were to search for the story on Google, you'd search for the parable of talents. The reason is because The Greek word that is used to describe what was given to the servants by the master is talenton. Talenton. A talenton is the sum of money that weighs one talent. See, in those days, a talent was a unit of measurement. It was a weight. And a talenton was one talent of money. For example, a talent of gold was 200 pounds of gold. That's a lot of gold, isn't it? They say that a talent was equal to 20 years worth of a day laborer's wage. 20 years. When you think about what this guy was given, the guy that was only given one talent, you're like, man, the poor guy, he only had a little bit. He had enough to pay a day laborer for 20 years. 200 pounds of gold. He had a lot. If you read the story in the King James Version, when you read it, it says that one man was given five talents of gold, one man was given two talents, and one man was given one talent. That's why maybe you've heard sermons preached where the minister read this passage and then encouraged us to use our talents for God. Well, that's not bad exegesis necessarily. That's not bad interpretation. But I do want you to understand that Jesus wasn't talking about talents in this story. What he was talking about, the example he used was money. 
But he wasn't talking about money either, at least not just money. He was talking about how we manage the things that we are given. How we steward the things that God entrusts to us. Yes, he was talking about our talents. Yes, he was talking about our money. And today, he was talking about our time. How we use the time that we've been given. Today, I want to point out three things about the talents in this story that are also true about our time. The first thing is this. It belongs to the master. It belongs to the master. You see, it's easy for us to skip over this point when we try to apply this story to our lives. But in the story, there was no confusion about to whom the gold belonged, was there? The servants never thought that it belonged to them. They always knew that it belonged to whom? To the master. Verse 14 says that the master was going on a trip and he called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Whose wealth? His wealth. But see, the the gold belonged to the master. And the same thing goes for anything and everything that the Lord entrusts to us. It belongs to him. We're just taking care of it for him. All we are is the managers of what God is letting us manage. Job knew this. You remember we talked about this earlier when his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? What did Job say? He said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. It all all belongs to him. If he lets me use it, great. But it's all his. See, with our time, I think that we sometimes forget that. It's easy for us to say, well, it's my time, and I'm going to use it how I want. I only got so much of it, and it's mine, and I'm going to do whatever I want with it. But the truth is, it's not your time. It's God's. You ever thought about that? The time that you have, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. We need to look no further than Genesis chapter 1 to realize this. It may not spell it out, but it's real easy to deduce. You see, God created the earth on which we live. And then he created the sun and the moon and the stars, which measure time. He created the seasons. And then he created mankind and breathed his very breath into us to give us the life that we call our own. Job 12.10 reminds us of this. It says, in his hand, talking about God, in his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. So every minute that we have belongs to God. Everyone, the ones we use wisely, the ones we waste, they all belong to God. I've said before that about this parable that I wish that Jesus had been a little more creative in the way that he told it. Now, I realize how that sounds, but I really do. I wish Jesus had included a few more things in this parable. Like, I wish that there was... One servant who had taken the gold and gone to the mall. I really do. I wish there had been one servant that said, all right, I got this gold. (laughs) Ha ha! It's mine now. And went and spent every penny of it. Because that's how some of us live our lives when it comes to the things that God gives us. Some of us just say, ha, ha, it's mine now. And then we do what we want with it. Never thinking about the fact that it comes from God and still belongs to God. First thing we need to know is that the things that we have, like the talents in this story, they belong to the master. The second thing I want us to notice 
about the talents or the gold in this story is that everyone gets a different amount. Everyone gets a different amount. I've heard people say before, well, we all have the same amount of time. Shut up. We do not all have this. We all have the same number of hours in a day, but we don't all have the same number of days. We all get a different amount of time on this earth. Story says to one servant he gave five bags, to another he gave two, and to the last one he gave one. It's just like that with us. We don't all get the same amount of time on this earth. Some of us live 30 years, some of us live 60, and some live 100. I saw a picture on Facebook the other day of a woman who is significantly my elder celebrating her aunt's 100th birthday. That's a lot of years. And at the same time, I saw a post on Facebook this week of a pastor in California that took his own life at the age of 30. We don't all have the same amount of time on this earth. Somebody say that's not fair. You're right. That's not fair. It'd be a lot more fair if we all just lived the exact same number of days. Funeral directors would love it, help their fiscal planning. But we don't all get the same amount of time. And here's the kicker. Unlike the servants in the story, we don't know how much we have. At least they got to know how much they had. We have no idea. We don't get that luxury. James writes in chapter 4. Let's turn there. James chapter 4. We're going to read verses 13 and 14. It says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. James says, you don't even know if there's going to be a tomorrow. He says, your life is just like fog in the morning. Do you guys like fog? Man, I love when I get up early in the morning and I'm driving to work and the, and the fog's real thick. It's just so pretty. But have you ever noticed how you could be driving and there's fog and then all of a sudden it's just gone? That's what James is talking about here. Your life is just like that. It's here today and then gone tomorrow. Church, if that's not a reason to do something today, I don't know what is. If that's not a reason to, to do something right now, I don't know what is. In fact, some of you, I'm surprised you're not running out of the room right now to go get done what you need to get done. You may get 50 more years here, or you may die next week. So use the time that you have. Jesus tells us in John chapter 9, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Jesus said as long as we still have time, we got to do what God sent us here to do because the time's coming when we won't have that opportunity. Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 Verses 15 and 16 says this. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. You know what I think Paul's saying here? He says the days are evil. I may be the only person on the planet who thinks this. I didn't find a single commentary that says this, but I think there's a lot of people that write commentaries that aren't that smart. I read commentaries that, that say that what Paul is saying is these are evil times that we live in. 
that there is evil all around us. And that may be true, but I don't think so because I think Paul would have said that if he meant that. I think what Paul meant was the days are evil. The days are trying to sneak up on us. The days are too short. The days are trying to cut off our opportunity. So make the most of every opportunity we have because the days are against us. The days are evil. That coworker who you keep saying, man, I want to witness to them someday. They may die tomorrow. Or you may. Or it may not even be that dire. They may just get a new job tomorrow. And the opportunity that you have will be gone. Make the most of every opportunity. Because you don't know how many opportunities you have left. Our time belongs to God. We all get a different amount. And finally, he expects a return on his investment. The master expects a return on his investment. Can you imagine investing money and not getting anything back for it? How angry would that make you? Now, I'm like some of y'all. I've invested money before and lost it. Every penny. I'm definitely not very good at fantasy football. That's not investing. That's just spending money to play a game. But the master expects a return on his investment. The first servant comes to him and says, Master, here's the five bags you gave me, and I went and made five more. Here's all ten bags. The guy that he gave two says, Master, you gave me two bags, and I went and made two more. Here's what you gave me plus what I've earned. To both of those men, the master said, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. He said, great job. Way to go. Let's celebrate what you've done. You've made a return on what I gave you. And then the third servant came. Boy, it's not as good for him, is it? He says, Master, I knew that you were a hard man. (laughs) Butter him up before you tell him the bad news. I knew that you were a jerk. Harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid of you. And I went and hid your gold in the ground. Here it is. See what belongs to you. Here it is. Every penny. All that you gave me. I'm giving it back to you. I didn't take any for myself. I used it all. Or I didn't use any of it. I I kept it all for you. I gave it all to you. You know what the master said to him? You wicked, lazy servant. Ouch. I don't know about you. I wouldn't like it if that's how my boss talked to me. Brian, you are wicked and lazy. I get that kind of abuse at home. I don't expect it at work. He says, if you knew I was a hard man, then why didn't you at least take my gold to the bank? At least I could have got a little interest off of it. At least I could have gotten one and a half percent. Why didn't you do that? Can I tell you something, church, that jumped out to me when I was reading this story this week? I've never noticed it before. Our lives belong to God, right? Right? If if you believe that, say amen. 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 Our lives belong to God. We've already covered that. So if we live our lives for Him, isn't that just giving back to Him what was His? Let that sink in for a minute. 
He gave us our life. So if we live our whole lives for him, isn't that just giving back to him what he gave us? Isn't that just coming back and saying, here's the bag you gave me. See, some of us, I, I think that we're like, Lord, I'm living for you. Man, that's something to be proud of. I'll pat myself on the back. I'm living for you, Lord. I'm going to give my whole life to you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to thank you for all you've done. Well, yeah, you better. That's the bare minimum. That's what a wicked, lazy servant does. See, he expects a return on what he has entrusted to us. He doesn't just expect us to give our lives to him. He expects us to use our lives for him. I'm going to say that again. He doesn't just expect us to give our lives to him. He expects us to live our lives for him. To use our lives to get a return on his investment. We read earlier from the book of James where James said, you make all these plans for the future, you don't even know if you're going to have a future. Well, James doesn't stop there. He goes on, and in verse 17, this is what he says. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. If you know that you're supposed to do something good and you don't do it, it's sin. Church, I read an article once that was entitled, If You Are 35, You Have 500 Days to Live. 500 days, that's less than two years. What are you talking about? The article was saying that if, if we take the 36 or so years after the 35 that someone would have already lived at that point, and we take out all the time that they spend at work and caring for personal hygiene and eating and traveling and sleeping and the odd chores that we have to do, that there are about 500 days worth of time that that person gets to choose what they're going to do with. 500 days worth. Now some of us are older than 35. Some of us are younger. But you get the point, right? If you're 35, you've got around 500 days worth of time that you get to choose what to do with it. For whom are you going to use those 500 days? That's the question today. Are you going to share your time? I want to challenge you today to use those days for God. Use those days to make a return on his investment. You say, well, pastor, how do I do that? Come next week and I'll tell you. Come next week and I'll tell you. But between now and then, see if you can figure it out on your own. See if you can figure out how you're going to use your time for God to get him a return on the life that he has given you. Can we do that, church? I want everyone in the room to bow your head and close your eyes for me. Today, you may be here and you say, wow, I've never thought about it that way before. And to be honest, I've been living this life like it's my own. I haven't even given it to God, let alone using it for Him. You say, I haven't given my life to God. I'm not a Christian. I've been doing my own thing. If that's you, and today you say, you know what? I want to give my life to God. I want you to lift up your hand right where you're at. Say, I'm going to give it to Him. Anybody at all?
Now, if you're here and you say, you know what? I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. I try to follow him. But if I'm honest, Pastor, I haven't really been using my life for him. I haven't been working for him. I haven't been getting up every day thinking about how I'm going to get him a return on the investment that he's made in me. But I want to do better. I want to share my time. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hand right where you're at. Hands all over the room. Who else? Lord, I love you so much, and I'm so thankful for your word. Lord, I'm thankful for the time that you have given us on this earth. Lord, I hope I've got another 60 years to work for you. Lord, I pray that you'll give us the energy to work for you. That you'll give us the knowledge that we need to do so. That you'll give us creative ideas and encouragement and support and favor, God, that you will open doors. Lord, I pray that you will use us to get a return on your investment. I praise you and I thank you in Jesus' name.